Barron's Plateau is a rocky woodland in Tennessee, falling into open country dotted with farms. One of the rarest fish in North America lives here, the Barron's top minnow. A fully grown adult easily fits into the palm of your hand. It's probably as big as you'll get. That's a large female. See how their eyes are oriented to the top of the head. They can see insects and other things that fall into the, to the water column. That's some, I guess that's kind of how they get their name, top minnow. Historically, the top minnow lived in cold headwater springs of nearby rivers. But the wetlands have been drained and the springs dammed to make cattle ponds. The males get this iridescent color, this blue along the back. You can see the blue area there. You can see the, the line, the light colored line with the dot in the back. The, the exclam exclamation point there on the back. This is a distinguishing characteristic when they're swimming. And you can see that it, it very, it's very showy and, and shines up really well, especially in the sun. The top minnow prefers cold water streams to warm water ponds and they cannot compete with the western mosquito fish introduced about 40 years ago, and so the Barron's top minnow is threatened. This private pond in Summitville, Tennessee, is one of three places where native top minnow populations still exist. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is collecting top minnows so they can stock other streams and springs. That should be plenty. We've got several fish, it's like close to 100 probably. Brad Bingham strains his catch, bags the fish, and then pumps oxygen into the bag to keep the minnows alive for the trip to a nearby farm. The Fish and Wildlife Service has reintroduced top minnows in 23 locations, mostly on privately owned farms. While farmers nearly wiped out the top minnow, it's actually going down. Uh, they're now the ones who are bringing it back from the brink of extinction. Typically in Tennessee, our rare species are aquatic species. So in order to protect those aquatic species, we, we felt like it if we could install uh, livestock exclusion fencing along streams, then we would get the best bang for our buck. So we've been trying to work with landowners throughout the state to protect these riparian corridors. There's federal money to help farmers improve fish habitat. The Partners for Fish and Wildlife program pays 75% of the cost to keep cattle manure from leaking into nearby streams, and that helps the top minnow. Steve Cunningham raises dairy cows on 400 acres and grows wheat, corn, and soybeans to feed them. He volunteered to help Bingham save the Barron's top minnow and signed on to the top minnow recovery plan, largely because Bingham has a soft touch. They didn't come and tell us to keep the cows out of the creek. They came and told us, can you keep the cows out of the creek? It's a big difference. Bingham quietly persuaded most of the farmers in the Hickory Creek watershed to keep their stream frontage wild. The Joneses, the Curtises, the McCulloughs, the Murphys, the Smarts, all those people have joined in and helped out with this program. And on the other side, there's Bud Claiborne and people on the other branch of the Hickory Creek. Working together, farmers and the Fish and Wildlife Service have restored and protected seven miles of streams and creeks where the Barron's top minnow can live. Brad Bingham is busily stocking spring heads like this one with little fish found nowhere else in the world. For Assignment Earth, this is Gary Stryker.